Hey guys, I got a 03 Windstar today that has lean codes. What else are they going to have, right? Uh, they're pretty darn common if you got to check engine light on a Windstar. They'll run just fine uh, most of the time, especially if you have the failure of the isolator bolts, which this one does. It'll just be a slight leak enough to throw the, um, the light for going past 20% combined fuel trims so since this one has come to the shop for uh, this lean concern I'm gonna go over the the TSB basically of changing the isolator bolts and the in and the clamshell gaskets and the uh, intake gaskets and I'm also gonna go over a few other places that I've seen uh, vacuum leaks over the years common places to uh, check before you start delving into the uh, intake here so a few other things to check before you start going into the intake gaskets and just assuming. Make sure your PCV grommet here is fine and it holds this in place, your PCV valve. They want you to make sure that where it sticks in the intake here, that's not sliding off. Another common leak point is the actual rubber hose on here for the um, vacuum line to the fuel pressure regulator. This slides off here, this one's good. And then what I've seen people do is leave this line that goes to the air intake snorkel off and that'll cause a vacuum leak. And then this vapor line right here, that's the suction line, the vacuum line to the vapor management valve back there. That's the feed to it. Those can come off too pretty easy and cause leaks. Otherwise, we're looking at pulling this upper intake off, and we'll I'll show you the uh, gaskets they use from the factory. They're white, and as far as the clamshell and the lower intakes, and then the uh, isolator bolts were black from the factory, black rubber, and then new ones are green. And what happens is that black rubber from the factory, they get really soft and they lose their clamp load as far as cinching the upper to the lower intake and then it creates a vacuum leak. Alright guys, we're going to go after the intake seals on this Windstar and to do so we're going to pull the upper intake. First thing we got to do is lift up on these retainers right here. that push into these studs on the intake. Make sure you note the location of these two studs so they go back in the right place. Then we can go for this retainer right here that holds the fuel lines on. And you just pry up on the clip and it pops out. We can then pull our vacuum line for the fuel pressure regulator and set it aside. Now it's time to pull the DPFE right here the connector off, get that out of the way, two 10 millimeter nuts, that can go down here and just sit there, pull our PCV off, okay we can pull our IAC connector our TPS sensor out of the way. Loosen your clamp on the intake here, the intake snorkel, and then we're going to pull this whole snorkel out of the way. When you pull this intake snorkel off, before you do, there's a hose in the back here. Take out. Pop your throttle cable off of here. This one. Loosen your clamp, undo your band clamp here, and then the whole thing come out of the way. Disconnect your mass airflow sensor. Now we need to release these retainers from the studs for the spark plug wires. That one too. 
and then pull the spark plug wires off of the coil. At this point, we can start pulling the upper intake bolts off. And they're all regular cap head screws all the way around, except that one, that one, and then these ones are short studs up front. That's the only difference. So pull those upper intake bolts out. Alright guys, we're ready to pull the upper intake manifold. Um, there's a trick to getting it out without pulling this upper wiper cowl here and add more work to the workload. And once this is out of the way, everything there's plenty of room to work, even with that wiper cowl um, here. So lift up on this side and try working it past the IAC right here. Move it over a little bit and then push back. Just wiggle it. Back again. We're going back again and wiggling it. Now we're clearing the IAC. Same thing. You have to go up a little bit. Let's keep going back and up. And then we'll get over it. This little section here has to go over the IAC. And then we're move. Now we're like this, we still can't pull it out. You go this way with it. And it'll go around that pump right here in the intake manifold and then it comes right out without any damage or anything. So this is how it looks with the intake manifold off, the upper uh, part of the upper intake. It's like a clamshell design and you can tell right here that it's original by the fact that the seal here is um, white and these should be black rubber. We'll see when we pull them off and then uh, the new ones for the clamshell here are a light blue. So at this point, we can go back here, and there's a big vacuum line right here. Pull it off. Just leave it to the side. And over here, behind the IAC, there's a vacuum line for the EVAP system for the vapor valve. Pull that off, and then. At that point, we got to pull all these bolts that hold it to the lower intake, and then we can lift up and pull it out, and we could deal with the electrical connector for the uh, EGR valve, EGR vacuum regulator valve, and the um, vacuum lines and all that for that. And besides that, they'll be free. We're going to leave the cables on. When taking these bolts out, make sure you got all of them accounted for in a pile before you start lifting this up. And you can see these ones are black, whereas the new ones are uh, green. And this is white, and the new ones are uh, a, a nice blue color. And that shows the change in uh, design. After all these bolts are out, this thing will be totally loose. And you come back here, the EGR vacuum regulator. There's an electrical connector, pull that off, and then right down there, there's a vacuum line. They're a pair, and they come off together. And then you got this big vacuum line um, for the booster. It's a lot easier, and you'll do less damage you just pull it off from the booster and bring the whole hose out with uh, the intake. After the, all that's disconnected, we can pick it up, get your vacuum line through the uh, hoses back here, the one for the booster, you gotta wrap it in the intake. And then this whole thing, once you get this off, We'll flip over. So what happens is the these isolator bolts they call them that hold down the lower intake and you know 
provide a torque load on it so that it actually clamps down to the lower intake and you know the intake seals can seal it up what they do is they get soft over time from the oil in the intake which is normal from the PCV system and they get squished down and they get soft and that loses that clamp load and now you have a uh, air leak big enough to set the codes anyways it's not going to be a massive vacuum leak where uh, it runs horrible and you can see the difference in the two already and the new ones are a lot harder it's more of like a urethane design that's resistant to the oil so this should take care of it from here on out okay very important tip while we're in here we need to be looking at these um, EGR ports on here on each cylinder and no matter if they're clean looking or not you know free and open or not we need to punch the bore on them and uh, clean them out with some throttle body cleaner too because these are prone to getting plugged up and then one of these is not going to be plugged up and that one is going to get all the EGR in that particular cylinder and you'll have misfires in that cylinder as soon as the EGR comes on so it'll run fine at idle, you start driving, the EGR turns on like normal and it'll flow through this center channel here not this pipe, underneath here right? integral to the intake and it'll feed them all, it's a unique design to I think these and the uh, 4.2 liter V6 on the trucks and it has this port system for the EGR instead of putting it all through the intake because the upper intake is um, plastic so they put it all through the um, lower cast aluminum and that will cause misfires and headaches for you in the future so you might as well take care of it now a thick coat hanger fits in there pretty good if you have nothing else move it around, punch the bore, wallow it out a little bit and then take some throttle body cleaner get it down in there and if you have it if you have it put air through it watch the other ones, they're going to spray out though like that one is and then we can uh, go on to these other ones and make sure they're all punched out and clean so we got the upper intake all cleaned out old gaskets out, new ones in make sure you put them in the locator tabs right there we got our ports cleaned and we got our intake clean where it mates with the upper intake and uh, got all scrubbed up and we use brake clean to degrease it and now we can reassemble put this back into place and get it lined up there we go put your vacuum lines back onto the EGR vacuum regulator and then your connector brake booster line back in fully seated and while we're back here let's get this EVAP vacuum line back on next thing we need to do is start putting in these bolts for the upper intake and threading them by hand when putting those bolts back in and you're screwing them in by hand before you start um, tightening them down make sure you get the ports aligned I had to pull mine back a little bit this way and then you can start um, tightening those bolts down hand tight and then we're going to torque them in a certain torque sequence to 89 inch pounds and I'll put a just link to the picture of the torque sequence down in the description so go ahead and torque those down and we can start putting that clamshell back on before putting that top clamshell back on we can pick out our clamshell gasket clean it up a little bit and you can put the new blue one in there when putting in this clamshell gasket it does have locators on them 
right there, if we could focus a little bit here, and right there, and it does go in a certain way to accommodate this little hump right here, up and over, and make sure it's pressed in all the way, if you have to go over it a couple of times, so it pressed in all the way, we don't want to create any new uh, vacuum leaks, and while you got that top part off, it's easier now to put in like this vacuum line to the port right there. Same thing going back in, be extra careful with your new gasket. You're going to go in the same way, go back, and just keep working it until you get past here. up on the cowl here a little bit. I like to do it just so I'm not putting any extra force on the intake. After that it clears and it'll sit right in. Give it a little press, make sure it's all located. We can start putting all these bolts back in here and getting that tightened up and sealed up before you start messing around anything else. I got the intake all torqued down now. They're 89 inch pounds also. And I'll put a description uh, in a description down below um, the torque sequence picture. Clip your fuel line, rack it back on there. Put your wire harness retainers in right here and here. It's that big fat harness. And then we can. Your vacuum line. Pressure regulator, make sure it's all tight. We clip our alternator cable back on. PCV tube. This one's getting a new one. Clip your harness back into your throttle body there. We can come over here and put the TPS sensor back in, connector, and the IAC. Reinstall your DPFE here. There's two 10 millimeter nuts. And then uh, push your connector all the way back on. Don't forget your spark plug wires. Drape them over the intake to those retainers from earlier. That one too. And then bring them around to the coil and put them all in there. Air intake snorkel back on, tighten your clamp. Make sure your band lines up with the little notch. And then make sure your fresh air inlet tube is back in there. And then your throttle cable is clipped into here for support. Don't forget your MAF sensor, clipped in, retained right there. Now that we got it all reassembled, all we got to do is clear the memory in the PCM and we're going to start it and let it idle for a while and learn the fuel trims and we'll see if it's fixed.